incredible? Well, good to see you here tonight at Anastasia. I'm excited to be here uh, to share with, God's, share with you God's Word. And we're kicking off our, our Christmas series. It's called How We Ate Christmas. And so uh, looking at some Christmas cookies on there. Um, and so tonight we're going to be talking about how do we anticipate hope? Do we anticipate hope? And so excited to share that with you tonight. And, and I know for Christmas time, that time of year, it's a time where uh, the season where there's a lot of anticipation. We're very excited about things. We're, we're getting an opportunity to celebrate uh, Jesus' birth. We're getting a time to, especially for the little ones, anticipate seeing the lights, the trees, uh, and see the gifts under the tree. Uh, I mean, the, the, it's time for candy. It's time to be together. It's all these things that we're looking forward to. And uh, I can remember, is my mic feeding back? Maybe, maybe not. Okay. All right. I can remember as a kid uh, this one particular Christmas in which I... Uh, I was about 15 or 16 years old, and my mom had told us that she had just went above and beyond this year and got us the coolest Christmas present. And so you got to know my mom. My mom is, is a little bit uh, sentimental, and she likes to do things that are real meaningful for the family. And, and so she had said, I got this incredible gift, and I got it for everybody, and I'm really excited to share it with everybody. And so I'm looking forward to it in, in anticipation. I'm wondering what it is, what it could, what it could it be. Uh, I'm excited about it. I'm hoping for these things. I'm kind of running through some things in my mind of what things it might be. And, and so I'm looking at all these things, and, and I'm wondering. It finally came the day of Christmas, and we all gathered around, and my mom had bought all the same thing for everybody. And we had an opportunity to open our gift at the same time. And it's all running through my mind. What, what did she get us? You know, what, what possible things could she have put in this, this gift? And so we start unwrapping it. And I actually have the original gift. I held on to it. And so we're thinking, you know, all the things it could have been. And we begin to open it. And all my family's opening it at once. And we're anticipating and hoping for things. But it's not exactly what we anticipated and hoped for. <laughs> they were red footed pajamas that she got all of us. And um, she got everybody in the family, including all the dogs in the family, these footed pajamas so that we could take a Christmas picture together. And it wouldn't be complete without my name on the backside of it. And so we had hoped and we anticipated and we had looked forward to that moment when we opened the gift and we got to that moment and it was not quite what we had anticipated and hoped for, although it was very thoughtful and I still have the pajamas to this day and I carry those with me. But, you know, Christmas time is a time we look forward and hope. We anticipate. And, and hope, I, I think for many of us, is a hard concept. It's, it's something difficult to understand. And I think a lot of that is because of the context and understanding of hope in our society is a little bit backwards. Pull this mic away or switch. Don't need me to switch mics. Okay. Is there a mic here? Okay. I'll keep going. If y'all need me to get, get another mic, I'll bring one down to me. Can you toss one? Like four all the way. Through? Okay. And so... Hope for us, I think our concept, our definition, if you were to look up the definition of hope in our dictionary, hope is a feeling of expectation, a desire for a certain thing to happen. This is really quite opposite of how the term hope is used in the scripture. The hope in the Christian faith is rather this. It's to speak of God as the source and object of hope. Biblical hope avoids the subjectivity by being founded on something that provides a sufficient basis for confidence in its fulfillment. God in his redemptive acts as a whole and in the birth, life, and death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In other words, biblical hope is anticipating and believing the power of Jesus. Hope is not an outcome. Hope is not a possession. Hope is fully Jesus. And so the first thing you can write down in your, in your bulletin notes tonight is, do I really anticipate hope? Do I really anticipate hope? Because when we understand that God is the very context and source of our hope, our lives begin to change and look differently. We begin to then anticipate the work of Jesus in our lives. Do we allow our, we allow our faith in Jesus to be the essence of our hope? You know, I think a lot of our issue when we talk about hope and understanding it is there's a big difference between hoping for and hoping in. A lot of times we hope for a circumstance or an event or maybe we're hoping for something, but there's a major difference between hoping for something and hoping in. 
Jesus came in a time of the world when they were hopeless, when they needed someone to hope in. And so our scripture tonight, as we take a look at it, is a part of Jesus' ministry in the early part as he began to establish himself as the source of hope to many, teaching, healing, and performing miracles. So tonight we're going to be looking at a passage in Matthew chapter 12 in which Jesus had just healed a man with a withered hand on the day of the Sabbath, breaking religious laws and, of the time and rousing the hypocritical religious leaders and finding the religious leaders bringing pressure to him. And so we're going to look in Matthew 15, or excuse me, Matthew chapter 12 tonight in verses 15 through 21. I'm going to invite you now, if you're able tonight, to stand in honor of God's word. Matthew chapter 12, starting in verse 15. Jesus, aware of this, withdrew from there, and many followed him, and he healed them all, and ordered them not to make him known. This was to fill that what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, behold, my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved with whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him. And he will proclaim justice to the Gentiles. He will not quarrel or cry aloud, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not quench until he brings justice to victory. And in his name, the Gentiles will hope. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, God, we are thankful for your word. God, we are thankful that the hope for the hope that you have given us through your son Jesus. God, as we open your word tonight and look in ways in which we can anticipate hope, God, may you speak truth to us and may we be reminded that, God, we don't need to hope for, but we need to hope in the name of Jesus because Jesus will never fail us. He will never let our hopes down. He will always be the source of our hope. God, bless the reading of your word tonight and may it speak to us in power. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Second thing you can write down tonight is hope exists in the context of hurt. Verse 15, going back to it, it says, Jesus was aware of this, withdrew from there, and many followed him, and he healed them all in order that no one make him known. And Jesus came to a time when hope was needed. People were desperate. The Jews, however, were despondent. Once again, they were conquered, they were oppressed, they were polluted. Hope was running low, faith was even lower. They were convinced that now the only thing that could save them in their faith was the appearance of the Messiah. The New Testament tells us the story of how hope came. And not only for the Jews, but the entire world. Christ's fulfillment of the prophecy was anticipated and recognized by many who sought him out. The stories of the Roman centurion, the wise men, the Pharisees, Nicodemus, show how Jesus was recognized as the Messiah by those from several different cultures. There had been a 400-year period of silence, of intertestamental period, in where, in which was broken with the greatest story ever told. It's, it's the gospel of Jesus. There was this time period when, when there was just silence, when the prophets stopped prophesying, and there was just this absence of the word of God and those speaking it. But it was boldly broken by Jesus as he came to minister on this earth. Jesus became hope in a time of hurt, a time of fear, a time of disbelief. In, in Scripture, hope appeared in the most desperate of times. It is the most, in the most unusual circumstances. So many people found themselves hopeless, faithless, lost waiting, anticipating, hoping that one day the Messiah would come. And as he came, even in the midst of their desperation, they found hope. It's an incredible how Jesus works. Going back to that scripture, that there were so many who needed healing, so many who, who needed faith, and it says that many followed him, and all that followed him, all that followed him were healed. People were looking for hope, and they found it in Jesus. And when they turned to Jesus, Jesus provided healing for them. What a truth for us. That when we turn to Jesus and we put our hope in him, he provides healing, he provides redemption, he provides grace. In the most desperate of place, hope exists in the context of our hurt, in the most unusual circumstances. You know, I was reading online the other day, uh, I was looking for some hardy plants that I could plant at our house because, uh, to be honest, plants 
that come to our house don't end up making it very long. <laughs> and so I was doing a little bit of research, and I was looking for a plant that could survive anything, right? <laughs> My wife and I are not very good at keeping plants alive, to be honest. And, and I was reading, and I was trying to find the right plant that I could put in our front yard or in some pots that would stay alive no matter what. And I, and I read this article about this interesting plant that grows in Africa, in the desert in Nambia. And, and it, it's called... Um, uh, excuse me, it's called the tumboa tree, and it, it's really interesting. It's not really a tree. It's more so a plant, but it grows in the most inhospitable climate in all the world. I mean, it's, it's a desert, and this plant not only grows, it flourishes. It can go without receiving rain for five years and still survive. It's this incredible plant. Even more interesting is this plant. Uh, I actually have a picture of it, if we can show that picture. It's not a very attractive plant, I give it that, but it grows in the desert. But listen to this, it flourishes in the most unlikely places, and it can grow, uh, it can live average, this is the average, 600 to 700 years. They have plants that they have dated over 2,000 years old. It's an incredible plant that, that flourishes in the desert, in the most unlikely place for a plant to grow. This plant is thriving. You know, as I thought about that, it, it's very similar for us as Christians for hope. Hope seems to thrive for us who are followers of Christ in the most unlikely of circumstances, in the most inhospitable climates and, and, and times. For Christian, hope seems to appear uh, in the most unlikely places, time and circumstance. Hope makes itself known in helpless situation. And broken marriages, amidst the loss of a family member, and the struggle with addiction, the hurt of loneliness, the consequence of sin, hope thrives. Because Jesus, because Jesus took the hopelessness in the world and the brokenness in the world, and he took it to the cross. And in the most desperate of situations, in the most broken of situations, hope had a name, and his name was Jesus. And it was spoken for all the world to hear. Be reminded tonight that as Christians, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, we have a hope. And it can thrive in the midst of hurt. I love what 1 Corinthians chapter 4 says in verses 7 through 12. He says, but we have this treasures in jars of clay. To show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. If we, we who are live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life is in you. Hope exists. Hope exists even in our broken mortal bodies because of what Jesus did on the cross. Third thing you can write down tonight is let the word of God declare my hope. Let the word of God declare my hope. Verse 17 it says, this was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. And he references a passage in Isaiah which reads, uh, Isaiah 42, 1 through 3. It says, behold my servant who I am uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put in him my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift a voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break. Faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. For the Jews, the word of God was a declaration of their hope. For the people of Israel, the word of God was, uh, was to be memorized so that it could be passed down, but it was also a source of their hope that they would go back to. Jesus makes reference to the hope that he was proph prophesied to bring in Isaiah. And the Jews and, and the people of Israel held on to that hope. And they spoke it over and over again. And even in that time where no prophet was prophesying, they held on to that hope. They clenched it. It was the source of their hope. It was the declaration of God's word. Similar for us today, the word of God is a declaration of our hope. If you want to be reminded of the hope that God gave us, turn to his word. Hear the word of God. Tell of the hope that's been given. Memorize the word of God. 
that he has given to us and hold fast to the hope that he has shown us. We turn to God's word and, and, and we declare the hope that is in God's word. It should move us to declare our hope to others. First Peter says, but in your hearts honor Christ, the Lord is holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks for you a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. It's pretty interesting going back to that passage in Isaiah that, that he said not even a reed would be broken, something that is so delicate. Not even a voice would be yelled on the streets. Not even a wick would be come out. And Jesus would establish hope, not with power, not with this great authority, but Jesus would establish hope by his meekness, by his humbleness. And becoming and serving the least of these and sharing with them, declaring with them the hope that can be found in God and God alone. What a reminder for us each and every day to declare our hope to one another. <laughs> I love what that passage in Peter says, if anyone asks for the reason of the hope that is in you, <laughs> share with them Christ. As Christians, our lives are to be different to stand out. The outside world should see us and see a hope that is unshakable, that is different from the rest of the world. And we shouldn't be ashamed to declare that hope. Hope also allows us to rejoice in our suffering because that produces endurance, character, and which in turn gives us hope. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5 says, not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who he has given to us. Hope gives us endurance. It builds character. And you know, hope doesn't put us to shame. It doesn't disappoint us. When we have hope in Christ, we are never disappointed in what God gives us. Hmm. Lastly, hope should purify our lives. It should purify our mind to see Jesus more clearly and to trust him with a greater faith. 1 John chapter 3 says, And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. There are certainly many things in this world that uh, you can be encouraged to put your hope in. Or you can hope for a circumstance. You can hope for an outcome. But none of them will give you a secure foundation like putting your hope in Jesus. Last thing you can write down tonight is, I will find my hope in Jesus. I will find my hope in Jesus. The last part of the passage, it says, and in his name, the Gentiles will hope. For so long, the Church of Israel, the, the Jews were looking forward, anticipating to find hope in their Messiah. Little did they know that the Messiah who came would not only give hope to the Jews, but he would give hope to the whole world. He would declare, he would bring forth hope to a lost world. I'm reminded of a story for me. When I was a, a teen in high school, I went on a mission trip to Canada. And we, we traveled to Kingston, Ontario, and, and we, we traveled there and... and um, on this mission trip, and if you know anything about Christianity in North America, in Canada, um, there's the fewest uh, percentage of people in North America who are evangelical Christians. And so as we were par preparing to go on this trip, uh, some of the missionaries would share with us and, and, and tell us that as we share Jesus with people, uh, don't expect immediate response. <laughs> don't expect them to put faith in Jesus. It's just, Jesus is not known to many people. They won't know who Jesus is. And so we kind of went with the anticipation that we would be planting seeds for people to hopefully one day put their faith and trust in Jesus. In our first day, we, um, we were taking a trip to a nursing home and we were gonna go love on the residents there and, and, and share our faith. And I remember I got there, hadn't been even 20 minutes since I got there and there was this little old sweet lady sitting in the corner and I just felt God drawing me to go talk to her. And I went up to this lady And I began to talk to her and just tell her where I was from and what I was doing up in here that I was on a mission trip. And I began to tell her that I'd come to, to really share the love of Jesus. And without blinking, without pausing, she told me that she had been waiting for someone to come tell her about Jesus. 
And so I got to walk through this sweet old lady, what it means to put faith in Jesus, what it means to have hope in the name of Jesus. And here's a place where very few people even have heard of Jesus and know the name of Jesus. And God was working in such a way that she was ready to put her full hope, her full trust in the name of Jesus. And that day she accepted Christ. We have a hope in the name of Jesus. I don't know where you're at tonight. You may be like that lady that I, I had an opportunity to lead to the Lord. Maybe you're ready to put your hope in Jesus. I can tell you this. Everything may not go the way you desire when you put your hope in Jesus. All the things that you anticipate, maybe all the things that you uh, wish for, the, the things to have, the perfect life, it may not happen that way. But I, I know that no matter what you go through, no matter what circumstances, no matter what hurt you may experience in your life, Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you, that he will be with you every day of your life for the rest of your days until we meet him face to face in eternity. That's a hope that doesn't let you down. That's a hope that's secure. And if you tonight want to put your hope and trust in the name above all other names, the name of Jesus, I want to invite you in just a minute to do that. And trust him as your Lord and Savior. For a world over 2,000 years ago, he brought an incredible hope that is still speaking volumes to many today. Because he is the real thing. He is the real source of hope. Let's anticipate that hope. Let's pray together tonight. Lord Jesus. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Real Life, Real Hope. I'm Walter West, lead pastor of Anastasia Baptist Church. And our mission as a church is to help people embrace the life-changing truth of Jesus Christ. And that includes you. Christ has a purpose for your life. He has a mission for your life. He wants you to be reconciled with himself. He has a destiny for you. You know, if you want to find out more about that destiny, I invite you to contact us. You can find Anastasia Baptist Church online at www.anastasiachurch.org. Or you can find us uh, uh, locally in the St. Augustine, Florida area. We'd love for you to come by and see us personally. Or you can call us by telephone. It's area code 904-471-2166. Thank you for joining us. And until next time, God bless you.